بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Since September 2019 the Islamic Education Trust Human Welfare Department has positively touched over 6,500 lives through its intervention program the food aid program the financial aid program Kurbani meat distribution during Eid Al-Adha Widows Empowerment Program the Orphan Care Program and the tree planting program. For this good work to continue and be sustained, we need your continuous support. Jazakumullahu khayran as we look forward to your generous donation. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome to this episode uh part of a series looking at issues surrounding financial literacy and the development of an entrepreneurial mindset. My name is Muhammad Nuruddin Lemu. I'm a director for research and training at the Da'awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust and a director of Lotus Capital Halal Investments. In this episode, I'd like to look a lot on the subject of how we manage debts, how we manage loans, and the etiquettes of that while we are trying to make money. Now there are two major types of loans. Uh, when you go to borrow money from someone, you usually want to borrow it for a consumable item. In other words, some kind of liability. Uh, a television, uh, rent, you are buying something that doesn't necessarily bring in money. That's one type of loan. The other loan is an investment loan where you want to buy an asset, you want to invest in something that will bring money out. As much as possible, try never to borrow money for consumables. Sometimes it's unavoidable, fully understandable. Some people's financial situations make it very difficult for them to get out of that cycle of uh, borrow money and then find ways of paying back later and that continues. But as much as possible, we try to avoid consumer loans. Uh, don't buy a television with money you loan. Save for your television. As much as possible, don't take such loans. As I said earlier, we live in a world of interdependence. And there are times when you would have to depend on others for money. Fully understandable. Even when you go to get investment loans and you want money to put into an asset that will grow, do it carefully. Why? Because there's a risk that the investment may not uh, do well and you do not want to get into difficulties. You don't want to put your family house as collateral and have the risk of losing all of that. So be very careful how much you take as a loan, what kind of collateral you have, what exactly is being put at risk when you move even into investment loans. As the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah encourages us uh, to do is to put such loans in writing. If you're going to borrow some money from somebody, put it in writing, get witnesses. This is highly encouraged, especially if this may land in court. If it's important to you, whether large or small, put it in writing. We are encouraged by the Quran. Of course, the word of a Muslim should be as good as his signature. And so we do find even among the Sahaba, those who would borrow something and it wasn't put in writing, but there was a promise to pay back. And so when you want to borrow some money from somebody, it's not a large amount. You don't want to put it in writing. No problem, especially if it doesn't really matter to you. Don't ask for a loan you can't refund. Don't try to be a habitual debtor. The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith that if there's something that would stop even a martyr, somebody who died defending his community, if there's something that would stop that person from going to paradise, it's money he owes someone that he hasn't refunded. It's a debt. The reason why this subject is important is not just about our hereafter. The Prophet ﷺ said if somebody went and died defending the community 
and was to be raised back to life again. He would be blocked from going to paradise, even if he was to come back to life again, fight, defend. The sin of a debt is so serious that we should try never to have debts for long. Have a loan if you have to. But let it be one where, because one of the good things with investment loans, whether it's a house you want to buy and then pay off, is worst case scenario, the house is there to sell and refund the debtor. The investment, the shares, usually there. Where necessary, as much as possible, try and avoid this. The other reason why debts are very uh, critical, sometimes dangerous, sometimes very useful, is how you manage relationships is sometimes more important than the value of the money you borrowed. So you can borrow 100,000 Naira, but in the way you handle the repayment or otherwise of that money, you spoil a relationship that is worth 5 million, 1 million, and if you look in the long term, 10 million, 100 million Naira relationship, you spoilt it just because of 5,000 Naira today. So please, if somebody already is close enough to you, cares enough to agree to lend you money, please do not joke with that relationship. When it comes to loans, one of the biggest things you can lose in how you manage your debt is a very big asset you have, your trustworthiness, your trustworthiness. How you manage a debt, the breaking of promises, changing agreements, telling lies, can mess your most important asset, your trustworthiness. The reason why somebody even agreed to lend you 10,000 Naira or 100,000 Naira or a million Naira is because they trusted you. And if the way you ha manage that money is one that has no integrity behind it, you may lose a lot of other great opportunities, great pathways of Allah's rizq, gifts, uh, bounties to you that would have come through that channel. But you burnt your cables. You burnt your connections. You messed up the relationship. Life is full of ladders. And the ladder you climb this time, if you manage it in such a way that you break any of the rungs of the ladder, you may have to climb that ladder again next time, but it may not be available. Life is full of circles and roundabouts. And the way you treat people now, people remember. And they share that information with each other. And it messes up your future. One of the big assets we all have, they don't come out when you want. It's usually when it gets dark that the stars start to shine. Some of us, how we manage debts, Borrow from this person, no refunding. Borrow from another person and you 419 him. Borrow from another one and you don't give him the full amount. Borrow from this person and you keep borrowing, you keep getting in debt and you're not refunding. You start to destroy your own safety nets. You destroy your own network. You destroy your own connections and cables. Word spreads quickly among your family members. When somebody is now complaining that this person hasn't paid me my money, the other one said, you too. When this one just said, oh, this guy traveled, then somebody says, ah, he borrowed money from me or I lent him money until now he hasn't. Unfortunately, the complaints, the moment your name comes, a new reputation that is terrible starts to develop around you, burns your cables. These are the same people who, if you had fallen sick, you are in one difficulty, will rally to support you. If God forbid your house got burnt, they would be there as your insurance. They would be there to buffer the difficulty and ensure that relief comes. You know, when we say, Innamal usri yusra, after hardship is relief, the people who Allah uses to make the relief, you have already destroyed your relationship and goodwill with them, and they really don't care. Be very careful about being a habitual borrower and beggar. After a while, people get tired of you. And unfortunately, as the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever opens the door to, to begging, Allah also opens the door 
to poverty for that person. So let's be very careful about getting into the habit of begging. It kills your own creativity. It kills your own self-esteem. Sometimes we have challenges in refunding loans. Sometimes you have to borrow money, but things don't go as expected. If you've borrowed money and you are having difficulty in refunding, please go to the person you borrowed the money from and give them updates and be honest. Give them details. Everybody gets into situations that are difficult. Everybody has borrowed money and has found some difficult situation that has made it uh, very hard for them to keep to the original agreement. However, you cannot over-communicate if you are the debtor. Keep the person you borrowed the money from in the picture of why it is difficult. Be truthful, be sincere, keep in touch. If you're going to make a new arrangement, make it as soon as possible. If today was when you were to finish paying, don't wait until today. Then you come and say why you can't pay. Let the person know ahead of time. Don't break trust. Don't hide. Don't disappear. Learn how you manage your embarrassing situation. Get a good, effective apology. And keep trust. Don't let the person not want to hear you because you are an excusiologist. You will just come up with excuses. And let the person see effort on your side. So you are supposed to bring 10,000 this month. You didn't have 10,000. How much do you have? Seven. Give seven. How much do you have? Three. Give three. Explain. But don't do nothing. The last thing is you are eating uh, kose, you are eating some uh, suya, some other thing you are enjoying. You are traveling here and you have not finished paying your debt. And this person starts to feel you really don't care. Be very careful about the silence of the person who you the, the creditor, the person who you borrowed money from. Don't ever imagine that be, just because they haven't disturbed you that everything is okay. They say in physics that nature abhors a vacuum. Shaitan loves a vacuum. And shaitan will fill in that silence both in your head and in the head of the person you borrowed money from. So be proactive, take responsibility of that silence and fill it in appropriately. Don't let shaitan's wiswas be what will fill people's imagination. You don't care, you are irresponsible, they will reach conclusions. Don't let the silence allow shaitan to fill it in with his own wiswas. You go and say what needs to be said. Be very careful about finding excuses and justifications for not paying. Oh, the amount is very small. If it's very small, why did you go and borrow it? It's not your money. You said you will pay back at a particular time. Go and do what you said you would do. Remember, there's a Yoruba saying that the farmer person who has a farm will come and find that somebody defecated and put excrement on his farm. The person who defecated forgets where he went and defecated. But the farmer who had to pack it, the one who was the victim of this person's defecation, never forgets where it happened. It is easy for you who borrowed from this person borrowed to forget whether you've paid back or not paid back. But don't ever for a second believe that the person you borrowed from has forgotten about it. Don't believe that, oh, my needs are greater. Uh, they don't really need it. They are already rich. I have bigger needs. My situation is worse. Don't bring that type of excuse as a justification for yourself. If you borrowed, keep to your words keep to your agreement as we are taught in the Quran. Inshallah, when we come back from the break, we'll look at a very tricky situation where you have people who want to borrow and they are close to you, friends, relatives.
till we come back inshallah assalamu alaikum